Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to work some problems related to the t-table. The first problem asks for the proportion of the t-distribution model that falls in the region t with 45 degrees of freedom, which is what the little subscript is, is greater than 2.6. I always advocate getting a picture of this if you can. The t-distribution is sort of like the normal distribution, symmetric and bell-shaped, a little bit flatter than the normal. The mean of the t-distribution is zero, so 2.6 is someone, somewhat, somewhere excuse me, greater than zero. The region we are looking for is a region that falls greater than 2.6. So, go to the t-table, And this is called the t-hypothesis table, by the way. Notice that the degrees of freedom are given on the left-hand side. You want to scroll down until you find 45 degrees of, of freedom. It's on the second page on this table. Scroll over until you find the calculated value of t, or the t value of 2.6. And let me make sure I have the right, the right row. It's this row. 2.6, 45 degrees of freedom, 0 0.0063 from this table. But you've got to keep in mind what this table is giving you. This table is giving you the region that falls in the tails. Okay, so it's so in other words, it's the region that falls above in this case, 2.6. So that value is, let me go back to my table again, 0 0.0063. That's the proportion, or as a, as a percentage, that would be 0.63%. The second problem is related. It just says, what proportion of the t-distribution distri model falls in the region where t, 45 degrees of freedom, is less than 2.6? So again, I'm going to graph this. Here's our t-distribution model. Zero is the mean. 2.6 is somewhere greater than zero. And the region we're looking for is the region that is less than 2.6. So all of this. Again, going to the t-distribution model, 45 degrees of freedom, 2.6. We just found that. That gives us the proportion of 0 0.0063, but obviously it can't be the same answer. And this is where, again, you have to understand this table gives you the value that falls above. It falls in the tails. All right, so go back to the model from the, from the table. We know that 0 0.0063 falls greater than 2.6. So that says the proportion of the T model with 45 degrees to freedom that falls less, well, the area under the curve is 1. 0 0.0063 falls greater. So what falls less is 1 minus 0 0.0063. And that equals 0 0.9937 or 99.37%. Okay, our third problem on reading the t-table deals with negative t-scores. Again, start out with a graph. You're saying what proportion of the t-distribution model, notice the degrees of freedom aren't given, falls in the region where t is greater than negative 1.8. The mean again is 0. 
negative 1.8 would be somewhere less than the mean. You're looking for the region of the t-distribution model that is greater than 1.8, so you're looking for all of this up here. Okay, so what t-curve am I dealing with? Well, the sample size is 32, and the degrees of freedom equals the sample size n minus 1, which equals 32 minus 1, or 31 degrees of freedom. So this is a t-curve with 31 degrees of freedom. Let's go to our t-table. Oh, and remember, and this is one of the things you have to remember about this t-table, there's no negative 1.8 among the calculated values of t. But what this table does is it uses the fact that the t-distribution is symmetric. So the proportion of the model that falls, say, greater than 1.8 is the same as the proportion of the model that falls less than negative 1.8. So just keep in mind that this table gives you the proportion that falls in the tails. So if we look up a degrees of freedom of 31, excuse me, so 31 degrees of freedom is right here. The 1.8 for the t-score is this column right here. So I'm going to scoot down this column in this row, 31 degrees of freedom, t-value of 1.8, 0 0.0408. Now we're not quite done. That says that the proportion of the model that falls in this tail right here. So less than 1.8 or greater than 1.8. So less than negative, excuse me, negative 1.8 is 0 0.0408. But again, that's not what we want. We want the proportion that falls greater than that. So again, the area under the curve is 1. So it falls greater than negative 1.8 is going to be 1 minus what we don't want which is what falls less than negative 1.8, or 0 0.0408. And so that proportion, the decimal, is equal to 0 point, let's see, 9.592, or 95.92% of the t-distribution model falls greater than negative 1.8. The last problem focuses on a slightly different question. What proportion of the t-distribution model falls in the region? Negative 1.711 to 1.711. And this is the t-distribution with 24 degrees of freedom. So you can again get a picture. Negative negative 1.711 falls somewhere below the mean of 0. 1.711 falls somewhere above the mean of 0. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the proportion of the model that falls between these values. Well, you could use the t-table to come up with a sort of an estimate of that. And here's your t-table and you would find for 24 degrees of freedom 1.7 uh, but that, that would be that would be a good estimate 24 degrees of freedom. The problem is that we have something slightly more than 1.7. That's a little bit of a, of a hint. If you look back at the figure you might think oh, okay I'm looking for a percent that falls between two identical values that's where we're going to use the other t-table, which is the t-table for confidence intervals. The t-table for confidence intervals gives you the percent that fall above and below a particular value. So if I go down to 
24 degrees of freedom, which is right here. The 1.711 is one of the values on this T confidence table. So you, you scoot up and you say, okay, well that corresponds to 90% confidence. Essentially what that's saying is that 90% of the data falls between a T-score of negative 1.711 and 1.711 for the T-distribution model with 24 degrees of freedom. As a proportion, 90% would equal 0 0.9.